Hello again, this is Dr. Bill Wild with the American Orthodox Society, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, when you're missing lower second bicuspids. There are two ways of dealing with this. Uh, one, if you want late to wait too late, you have to take the deciduous teeth out, or maybe uh, go in there and, and close the space completely with orthodontic appliances. But if you start early enough, you can almost get this to treat itself. So I'll show you the a case where we had to wait, or we did wait, and we had to go in and close it. And then I want to show you another case uh, later where we went in early enough and sectioned the deciduous tooth and uh, the space closed virtually on its own. So uh, let's get in here and it'll be a short uh, visit on this one, I hope, and uh, we'll start from there. Uh, now we have to, this is, this is a young man who was missing his lower second by cuspids. And we looked at this and I saw it back in 19, uh, 9, 1989, uh, and <clears throat> I'll show you the uh, x-rays here in just a minute, uh, and he's actually missing his lower second bicuspids. Now it's always, to my way of thinking, better, you, you need to take this tooth out, and then you bring these teeth forward and close this space. If your facial structure can't stand bringing it back a little bit, then you have to put a, a tad into the bone structure, the cortical bone here, and then bond it to this first bicuspid here so it won't move back. Then pull these teeth forward and close the space. That's the uh, that'd be the first and second and third molars, and you nearly always keep the uh, wisdom tooth when you uh, do something like this. You move that tooth one whole tooth forward, and we try to hold on to the wisdom teeth. So in this case, we did not start on time, so we're going to have to take this tooth out, and then we'll have to orthodontically move these teeth forward like that. So we'll get uh, going here on that. The upper teeth are there, everything's lined up. Of course, you've got some other things to do orthodontically, so you go in and do orthodontics, but you can actually have the space closed on the bottom almost automatically if you'll do the right thing here. Let's get uh, going. Now, here are the x rays. Now, this is the uh, <coughs> x-ray taken in 1987, that was before we actually started this, and I didn't, didn't uh, know quite what to do, but if you're on the ball and you know what you're doing in here, you can come in and take this deciduous tooth right here and just section it, you know, right, right down the middle. And then you leave this front portion in there, but you take the back portion out and you do a pulpotomy of this root right here and you keep this half tooth in place. And somebody uh, is going to say, well, why the dickens do you want to keep this uh, first half of this in place? Well, the first place it holds these teeth lined up, everything across here. And this piece in the front will keep the upper second uh, deciduous, upper second uh, deciduous motor from erupting down into this spot. If you let it erupt down, then the tooth will be in here and this tooth can't come forward. So you want to keep the front portion of this tooth forward. So you do a pulp on it. 
and you just go down that pump, don't do any uh, ridiculous stuff. Uh, you just, just ream that pump out and pack that zinc oxide and use it all in there just like we do with every one. And I've done over, way over a thousand of those and I've never had one go bad on me and they come out. If you had some of that left over and it came out of the root, it wouldn't hurt anything at all. It'll just be a little piece of zinc oxide you know you can flip out when it comes out. And that will let this tooth come over to here and when it gets to this point, you take this part out and then this tooth will drift over to here. And as it drifts, the, the second motor will follow it and the wisdom tooth back here will follow that. And uh, frequently you'll be able to save the wisdom tooth and it'll come out and you have a tooth part of the way back here to support that uh, tooth. That's uh, Oh, and now the rest of the stuff, okay, we'll expand or do that, just regular orthodontics to bring the rest of this in right here. All right, we'll go now to the next uh, deal. I'm going to erase that, and we'll come here. Now, we hesitated, and we did not take that out. This date here was 6 of 87. If I had worked on it then, I could have taken the distal portion of this tooth out, but I messed around and I didn't really uh, know exactly what I, I should do here, but this is what you should should do. So we waited until 1988 of 1987, and that was too late. All right, the reason it's too late, the root of this tooth is Partially, partly gone, so this front part would not have held up good enough to keep this tooth from coming, and it had already moved forward in there, so this tooth was down where it would catch on this right here. And now over here it would have probably worked, we got a good enough root, we, but anyway we, we did not do that. And so we end up taking these two deciduous teeth out. He's got wisdom teeth, and we're going to bring all this forward into this space. And this is 1987, and he's age 12 and a half here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. All right, <coughs> we did that, and of course we banded the uh, six-year bowlers and brought them forward and you could bring this back a little bit back here if it hadn't we'd had to put a, a tad in the cortical bone and bond this and then bring this up here and this won't, won't bring this back at all but if you can afford to bring this uh, anterior back a little bit or you can wear a class 2 elastic so then pull this forward you wouldn't have to have the uh, tad in there so much and you could bring all of this and you let's hope the wisdom teeth came in there. I think they did. Now let's uh, go to the next. This was done in 1990. So this is uh, like uh, from 87 something to 1990. And he's 13 years old at this point. And we continue with this and bring it on in. And the wisdom tooth over here straightened up. And it'll come in and we'll try to put it right in here, something like that. And catch this wisdom tooth here if it comes down. And if he has jaw length, we'll be able to use, use that too. So we've closed all this space up, brought these teeth forward. Now here it is in 1991, uh, <clears throat> we've still got this, and if we had done that other procedure, most all of this, except we could have done the orthodontics and quit, you know, this would close up, and I'll show you on the case later on. You can see how your first motor comes in underneath the bicuspids here, the second motor here, 
the third motor will support that uh, upper uh, second motor uh, coming through and the wisdom tooth might if it has to come down this tooth might fit in here you know and have enough to catch the wisdom tooth right there and you leave them all in there if you uh, can uh, do that now we've got to we need to bring that root back you can put a little tip in that and bring that root back in place this is for he's 14 years old and this is 1997 of 91. Now, here we go to uh, 3 of 92, and he's 1411. He's just about uh, 15 years old, and we're still working on it. See, we could have earned, finished it a lot uh, quicker had we done the... Uh, the uh, reduction of that tooth and let the thing drift forward. But we've got room now to bring this wisdom tooth will come right in here and, and this one come up in here if we have any trouble with it. We know how to put that thing on and put that little spring and bring it out here and pick it up and keep this wisdom tooth. So we'll try to put it in that spot right there. Okay, this is, uh, I'll take that out, uh, and here it is in Janu January of 1980, I mean, <laughs> 1996, and we started in 87, I believe, something like that. So this has been done, we finished, we put a 3 to 3 in here, and I didn't bond it on these teeth. And he bit down on some real hard stuff, and it bent that wire in, but it stayed in place. And uh, we left, we just came back and pulled it up and straightened it out and bonded it to these other teeth, and that straightened this up. When I brought this down, this root came back in place over here. And the wisdom teeth are definitely in here, and this will come up and move back. If it does, we know exactly how to pick it up and or just tilt it up, you know, put a tube on it and put a little spring in there like that. Come out and bring it up and hook it on something. You can bond the wire on that and hook this spring up and hook it. It'll pick that tooth up and push it right in place. Right there. This is, he's 18 years and 10 months old, nearly 19 years old. And you could put this in there and be a lot better than extracting this tooth. So if you don't know how to upright teeth, we've got one of the, the, the me, to my way of thinking, it's the only way to, that's the best way to upright teeth. And this is, this would be the best way to restore this tooth if you uh, come in there early and do that hemisection of that second deciduous uh, molar. And here it is, here it is, uh, nearly 19 years old. Now, I'm going to go from there to here. This, this is 1992. I don't know what, uh, okay, he's 14. Oh, this, oh, I went the wrong direction, sorry. With, uh, here we are in 1996, and here is the guy. He was quite a different looking fella. Uh, ten, well, about nine years into uh, growth. That's about the way he looked. He was a nice looking young man, and his teeth are straight, and all those teeth are in, and he's got his wisdom teeth on the bottom, and probably will save those on the top, and we're really, pretty well through with this uh, case, except I had to take this. And this was bonded so good here that I just bent this wire and pulled it back up in here, and then I bonded it to some of these teeth here, or let it straighten up a little bit better and bonded it to that. And that uh, finishes the case. I hope you pick up something from this and you will join our group and subscribe to it. Uh, and 
I don't know where you are in the world, but this works anywhere you are in the world. And it doesn't matter what, uh, how big you are or else, you can do this material. So thank you for watching, and I'm going to close out here, and uh, we'll just, i put a bite plate in there to keep from biting these teeth together and keep them closing down. If he uses that, the teeth get set in there, you know have a nice set of teeth really pretty much all his life. So thank you very much. And there's the little where the wire bent. So if you're bonding a three to three, it's probably best to bond it to these teeth here. If you don't, you can use dental floss and you can take the dental floss and run it under there. There's a little, you know, to clean out around that. So. I'll say goodbye and I hope you get something from this and keep keep up with it, our group and uh, subscribe to it. So I'll say goodbye.